In this video, we will be solving, again, uh, another example of a rational equation. Uh, but this is a bit more complicated than the one that we solved in the previous video. But in general, solving rational equations uh, really uh, relies on two important steps. Okay? The first step is to get rid of the denominators. We want to eliminate. We want to uh, get rid of these denominators because, you know, after all, the reason why we call them rational equations is because of these denominators, right? So you can get rid of these denominators. You can transform this equation into, say, a linear equation or a quadratic equation. Then we'll be able to solve and find the solutions, right? Because these are the things that we know how to solve, right? We know how to solve. We know how to solve linear and quadratic equations. Okay, so that's the first step. We sort of transform this equation to something like a linear or a quadratic equation. And then after that, whatever equation that comes out of the first step, that's the equation that we're going to solve. Okay, so those are the two main steps in solving rational equations. All right, let's do that for this example. Let me rewrite the equation down here. So I have x divided by, oops, sorry, let me write that here, x divided by x plus 2 minus 1 divided by x minus 2 equals 8 divided by x squared minus 4, right? Now, again, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the denominators, right? Now, how do you do that? Well, you multiply both sides by the LCD. In fact, that's what we did in the previous video, right? We multiplied both sides by the LCD. Now you can do that, right? You can do that. You can multiply both sides by the LCD. You first find the LCD. But what I want to do is I want you to sort of um, understand why, right? I want you to understand why we multiply with the LCD, okay? So how do, how do you get rid of x plus 2, right? How do, you, how do you eliminate that from the denominator? Well, I can multiply this side by a factor of x plus 2, right? So if I multiply this side by a factor of x plus 2, then I will be able to cancel x plus 2 and x plus 2 is gone in the denominator, right? But then, well, as usual when you're dealing with equations, whatever you multiply on the left side, you also do that on the right side, right? So that means you also multiply by x plus 2. Okay. And then we still have a denominator of x minus 2. How do you get rid of that? Well, same thing. You multiply by a factor of x minus 2. That will cancel out later on, so that x minus 2 is gone in the denominator. Now again, whatever you do on the left side, you do that on the right side. That's x minus 2, right? So we're done with the left side, right? So let's Let's look at the right side. Let's look at this denominator, right? We want to get rid of that denominator. So, so what you can do is, well, you can multiply this side by a factor of, by a factor of x squared minus 4, right? That will eventually cancel out later on, right? But that is actually, well, that's, that's good. That's okay. But that is not necessary, right? So before you do this, you have to make sure that your denominator is already factored out completely, okay? Now, is this already factored out? The answer is no, right? In fact, this is a difference of two squares, right? This is a perfect square, and this is also a perfect square. That's a difference of two squares, and we know how to factor that out, right? So that is actually equal to, that's actually equal to x plus 2 times x minus 2. So it turns out that this denominator right here is actually x plus 2 times x minus 2. So that means we need to multiply this side, the right side. We need to multiply the right side by a factor of x plus 2 and x minus 2. But we already have that, right? We already have x plus 2. We already have x minus 2 on the right-hand side. So you, need to, you, you don't need to do that. You don't need to multiply by x plus 2 and x minus 2. And so therefore, this is it, right? That's it. And in fact, 
this is actually this is actually your LCD. It's essentially how to find the LCD. Okay, so that, that's your LCD. Okay, so having said that, all that's left to do is to simplify, right? So now, how do we simplify? Well, we can distribute this factor. Okay, we can distribute this factor to both terms, right? To both terms. Okay, so we'll have we'll have x plus two times x minus two times x, right? Times x divided by x plus two. Okay, and then for this term you have so you have minus minus um, x plus two times x minus two times one right times one divided by x minus two and then on the right hand side you'll have eight that's this number right times x plus two times x minus two all over x squared minus four and then that's where we cancel the terms out or cancel the factors out so let's do that so we can cancel out x plus 2 right so that's what I was talking about earlier that you can cancel out the denominator right you can also cancel out x minus 2 and then we know that this x squared minus 4 is actually just equal to x plus 2 times x minus 2 so you can cancel this out and that one those are the same thing okay so we need to simplify right so we have, wait, we have x minus 2 times x minus x plus 2 times 1, which is just x plus 2, right? And then that's equal to 8. Then we simplify again, further, right? We simplify further. We can distribute the x to both terms, right? So we can distribute the x both terms. And we'll have, what? We'll have x times x is x squared. And then negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And then here you distribute the negative sign, right? So that's minus x minus 2 equals 8. Then what we want is a simple equation, right? Where the right-hand side is equal to 0, right? So, so we, we can add or we can subtract Eight to both sides of this equation, right? So I want this eight. Uh, I want to eliminate this number eight right here. So I want to subtract by eight, and I'm also going to subtract by eight on the left side. So this is going to cancel out. So this becomes zero, right? And so what we'll have, what we'll have, is x squared, x squared, minus two x minus x which is minus 3x, and then minus 2 minus 8, that is minus 10, equals 0. So this is the equation that we want, right? This is a quadratic equation. So we're done with the first step. The first step is to eliminate the denominators. We, and then, you know, basically, uh, a new equation will come out of that process. So... And, and that equation for this example is a quadratic equation. So this is what we're going to solve, right? So we're now on the second main step. That is to solve this quadratic equation. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so again, the equation was x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. How do we solve quadratic equations, right? Well, there are quite a few methods, but, uh, you know, the simplest one, the easiest one, is just to use the quadratic formula, right? Now, the quadratic formula is this, right? x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's the quadratic formula. And so what's left to do is to find a, b, and c, right? So let's do that. Let's find a, b, and c. If we, you know, if we can determine a, b, and c, then we can just simply substitute those values 
in our quadratic formula and then we'll arrive at the solution. Okay, let's do that. So A, so what is A? A is actually the coefficient, right? Let me write that down, the coefficient of x squared. Okay, so this is where A goes. Okay, and in this case A is 1, right? So that's A. And then B, B is, okay, B is the coefficient, the coefficient of x, right? So b is the coefficient of x. And where's the coefficient of x? That's, that's the coefficient of x, right? So this is b. This is a. Okay? Now what is c? c is, c is, let me write that here, c is the constant term, right? The term with no variable, right? It's the constant term. Where's that? It's this term right here. So this is your C, right? So in other words, if we write these down, so you have A equals 1, you have B equals negative 3, and you have C equals negative 10, then we can just simply substitute these values in our quadratic formula. Let's do that. So you have x equals negative b, right? Negative b. Our b is negative 3, so that's negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 3 squared, right? It's important that you enclose that one in a parenthesis, right? So that is negative 3 squared, that's b squared basically, um, minus 4, which is a constant, times a. Now what is a? a is 1, right? So a is 1, times c. In this case, c is negative 10, right? So that's c, so that's negative 10. And then you divide that with 2 times a, right? And a is 1. And then all that's left to do is to simplify, okay? So we have, we have, so that's negative times negative 3. It's basically positive 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, right? So that's positive 9. And then you have minus 4, 4 times 1 is 4 times negative 10, 4 times 1 times negative 10 is negative 40, right? So that's negative 40. So that's negative 40 all over 2 times 1, which is 2. That is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus negative 40. That's basically 9 plus 40, which is 49 over 2. And that will give us 3 plus or minus the square root of 49, which is 7. 7 over 2. And that is equal to 3 plus 7 is 10, right? So that's 3 plus 7 over 2 and 3 minus 7 over 2. So basically, we have here two solutions, right? Equals, so 3 plus 7 is 10 divided by 2 is 5. That's one of the solutions, and the other solution is 3 minus 7 over 2, which is, well, 3 minus 7 is four, negative 4, divided by 2 is negative 2. So, according to our um, solution, right, the solution to this equation are, are 5 and negative 2. Now, the question is, how do we know, or how do we check, if indeed these are the solutions, right? So what we're going to do is just simply substitute the values to our original equation, right? So let's, let's do that. Right, let me erase this one here. Okay, so let's substitute. So let's substitute 5 for x, right? So that's 5 divided by 5 plus 2 minus 
1 over 5 minus 2 equals 8 divided by 5 squared minus 4. Then that's 5 divided by 7 minus 1 third equals 8 divided by 25 minus 4, which is 21. And then we just, you know, confirm if this is a correct equation, if this equation is a true statement, right? So we have factors of 7, 3, and 21. The LCD is 21, so we can just multiply both sides by 21. That's your LCD, right? Um, and then simplify. So you have here, what, 21 divided by 7 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. That's 15 minus 21 divided by 3 is 7. 7 times 1 is 7 equals, you can cancel out 21, and you're left with 8. And then 15 minus 7 is 8 equals 8. So that tells you that 5 is indeed a solution to this quadra uh, I mean rational equation. Now let's test if 2 is also a solution, right? Our, our computation showed us that 2, I mean negative 2 is a solution, but we still need to check if that is actually the case. Because sometimes, sometimes, these results uh, give you a false solution, right? So it could be that negative 2 is a result from our process, but it could be that that is not a solution to the original equation. Remember that these are solutions of the quadratic equation, right? So, so this, this, this is a solution to the quadratic equation, but we don't know if these are also the solutions to the original rational equation, right? Sometimes um, that is not the case, okay? So let's test. Let's, let's test, right? Let me erase first. Okay, so let's substitute negative 2 for x. So you have minus 2 over negative 2 plus 2. Now, before you proceed with, you know, writing uh, uh, this, this part right here, observe that on your first term, you have a negative 2, you have a negative 2 divided by 0, right? Because minus 2 plus 2 is basically 0, right? And what does that tell you? Well, that tells you that this is an undefined expression, right? This is undefined. And so therefore, negative 2 is not a solution, right? Negative 2 is not a solution to the original rational equation, right? So this is not a solution to uh, the original rational equation. And actually we have names for these solutions, these, you know, wannabe solutions. These are called extraneous roots, okay? These are called extraneous roots. These are results or solutions that come out of our computation, but when you check with your original equation, um, you, you'll find that they are not actually solutions to the equation. 